Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Once again I'd like to thank you for your support um, for these videos. It is very much appreciated. Um, the, the small donation you make goes a long way to helping create these videos so for that I thank you. Now today's video was a request from one of the patrons, um, Christine Long. Now she's an artist in Hawaii and has her own gallery and she wanted to know if it was possible to pour some flat resin and then mould them to create curved surfaces a bit like um, fused glass. Now I myself have seen quite a few um, fused glass pieces that are bent and curved and things and um, I've been wanting to try this anyway to see if I could recreate something similar in resin. So this is this tutorial is um, just that. Um, my processes and everything how I got to create this curved piece. So I don't know if you can see that there. So it's it was poured flat into a mould and then um, waiting for it to cure enough so that when we bend and flex it it didn't run it was still hard enough to stay together but soft enough to bend so this is what the video is now you'll see in the video that i also sprayed um i tried out spraying a gloss varnish on the back um it looked really nice when the gloss varnish was wet However, when it dried, I didn't really like the finish, so I was still to do another layer of resin on the back to give a nice gloss finish. Also, this will um, serve a purpose to also strengthen the piece. Now, because this is only being cured now for um, a couple of days, it's, it's it's still quite bendy. You can still see that moving slightly. So, for the next week or so, this is going to sit on the the mould that I made out of some tins of beans and, <laughs> and what have you. Got to use what you got to use to get the job done. So that's what I did with that and you'll see that in the video. Um, but this is going to sit back on there for the next uh, at least seven days to make sure that it's fully cured and that when it's um, in position on the table, on the wall or wherever you want to do it with it or lie it flat, it doesn't try and flatten itself back out again so that's what that's going to happen with that so without further ado let's get into the video and see how we create our own little molded resin piece thank you so let's get started so i got this mat uh, silicone mat from kmart uh, i can't remember how much it cost it didn't cost a lot now it's a a mat a drip tray for pets for the putting the bowls and things on so I thought that would be um pretty good for the pouring but you can actually make your old you can use one of my old videos to get an idea on how to make your own uh, mold out of foam board and what have you so all I'm doing here is I've just poured a layer of clear resin and using um oh, I don't even know what that's called it's um <laughs> it's for painting things like that that I got from the local hardware store. I'm just using that to drag the resin round and just making sure that the whole area is covered in resin. It doesn't have to be a thick layer to start off with, you can always pour more. So that yeah, so I just move that about and then just pop some bubbles with the heat gun. Now we're gonna do this several times, so don't worry if there's still bubbles left because there's still quite a bit of work to do. So yeah, so then we uh, move on to adding the stones now those i got from a local um craft shop um but you can get them in a lot uh, equivalent in a lot of discount stores and things and they're very very inexpensive they are uh, lightweight acrylic gems that are in the shape of diamonds but you can use crushed glass um or stones or anything else that you have in stock to do this and we're just literally just going to pull them down the center um, just to add a bit of dimension and texture to the resin piece. Then using the stick here, I'm just making sure that 
all of the stones are covered in resin and there's no stray pieces and, and just dragging any that have gone astray to the side into the centre. We don't have to worry too much about how much um, it moves and things like that. I've just done there. I've just bent up the sides just to pull the resin back into the centre slightly. For this piece I've just mixed a couple of drops of purple India ink with the resin and I'm just going to run that on the outer edges not worrying too much about um, it being perfect or anything because we're going to move this later on I'm just pouring um, just on the edges there and just letting it run its course and, and flow where it wants to go. The second layer of resin is um, a copper pigment uh, from Colour Obsession so that's just been added to the resin and again I'm sitting that on top of the purple I, I'm also not worried about how much it looks um, I'm just letting that sit on top because we're going to come back to it and move it later again just zapping it with the heat gun just making sure that, that any big bubbles and things have burst and then I'm going to leave that to cure for one hour Okay, so it's been an hour and it's now time to start moving the resin out to take shape on the pattern that I wanted. Now the reason I left it for an hour was I didn't want the resin to be too runny um, and the resin is still movable but it's a lot thicker and you don't get as much spread happening doing it that way. So first of all I tried using the stick um, to just take the design and I did produce quite nice results and I do like that but it wasn't quite the look I was looking for so coming back in I, I've got myself um, a bottle a silicone bottle washer from Kmart it was quite expen inexpensive I'm not sure how much it was um, but because it's got like the little prongs sticking out there that's really good for dragging the resin out and sort of giving almost like a flame effect and it's given me ideas for my next piece which will have some flames and things happening so I'll use the same stick to do that in my next piece but for this um, as you can see I'm able to drag the resin down and the resins although it's still quite thick it still moves and it will still flatten so I'll just apply um, the heat gun again on top of there to just pop any bu bubbles but also what that will do, it will just help the um, resin just run together and so we're not left with any lumps and bumps that you don't need. I felt it needed pulling down a little bit more so um because when it had settled down I saw there was quite a few gaps so I'm uh, just dragging a little bit more I'm pushing a little bit up into the stone so that we've got the the flame effect sort of bursting out the stones a bit more if that makes sense so I'm just pushing that up slightly and just moving it around till I'm happy with it and once again giving that a zap with the heat gun just to make sure there's no bubbles in the resin now this has been left for eight hours to cure. I poured um, some resin into this silicone mat a bit earlier just so that I can test to make sure that the resin is not moving before I um, put it onto the shapes. Now as you can see I'm just using some tins to create the mould so keeping the resin in the silicone mould I'm now manipulating it. Now the resin is um, hard enough that it's not going to flow down the slope but it's still bendy enough that we can shape it into the shape that we want so it's finding that balance so what I did over the last um, I let it cure for five hours but then every hour after that I came back and I kept testing the resin to, in the other the bit that I poured just to check to see that that was okay and um, once I was happy with that I then moved it so here you can see my, my resin um, mold as, as primitive as it looks it is quite effective now you can go to a lot more trouble to create your own but for the purposes of this experiment um, the tins worked just fine
Well, it's the next morning. It's been left overnight to cure. You can see it's quite solid now. Um, as you can see, I'm still in my dressing gown because I was really excited to see how this one turned out. So all I'm going to do now is demold the resin. You'll see that this comes away fairly easily and that the resin is, is keeping its shape quite nicely. Now we do have some tatty edges but we will fix them up in a little while with a heat gun and a knife so don't worry too much about those at this stage. Now as you can see the back side is quite um, dull looking because of the mould so I thought I would try using a gloss spray to see how that turns out. Now while it's wet it actually looks quite shiny and glossy and I quite like the look of the finish. Um, I gave that a couple of coats and let it dry. Um, however, um, I'm not too happy with the end result so I am going to go back and do another layer of resin on the back to make that nice and shiny. So all I'm doing now is I'm just using my heat gun and I'm just heating the edges so that I can trim back the excess that um, crept up the sides of the mould. So I'll just go around there and do the whole lot. Now the mould, uh, sorry not the mould, the resin is still quite soft so that's why I've placed some tins underneath just to still keep the shape especially when I'm using the heat gun so that it doesn't come out of shape and I will, um, once I've finished this I'll keep this on here for the next seven days while it's still continuing to cure because it takes it takes probably a good week for it to fully cure so just so that it doesn't try and bend back flat it will sit on there for the next week or so and I'll just keep going back checking on it and seeing how it's doing and things like that but that's basically it um, for now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it gives you lots of ideas for new pieces. If like Christine you have any requests please message me as I would love to hear from you and if it is possible I will create a new video tutorial. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.